Braille is a system of raised dots that can be read with fingers by the blind and partially sighted community. It is not language, it is a code. A code by which many languages, such as English, Spanish, Arabic, Chinese and dozens of others may be written and read. Braille is used by thousands of people all over the world in their native languages and provides a means of literacy for all. It was invented in France, 1825, by Louis Braille, who after going blind at the age of three, found education very difficult. Traditionally, a small handful of books were printed with raised letters for the finger to trace, but this simply took too long. By the age of 15, Lewis designed his own system using a six-dot cell. And the letters of the alphabet were represented through a specific pattern of dots in the cell. Each cell can be read using the fingertips, much quicker than previous methods. However, my journey with Braille started much later than 1825. It all starts with a Christmas card. So when I was much younger, we were celebrating Christmas at my auntie's house, and amongst all of the Christmas cards that were on the mantelpiece was this one. And on the inside, at a distance, it almost looked blank. But upon closer inspection, I found that there was all of these raised dots that were kind of stamped into the paper. Now, my understanding of Braille at the time was very limited. And I think I'd, I sort of heard of what it was, but didn't really understand how it worked. So I was mostly confused. So when Braille was explained to me, I don't think it really helped. And it seemed even crazier than before. The idea that these bumps could make uh, words and that could form sentences and this could infer meaning was just insane to me. And it seemed like this incredible skill that would be very, very clever if someone was able to use it and they were blind. So the card belonged to my auntie Shirley and she is partially sighted. And I interviewed her for this project, which uh, you'll hear a bit of later. Uh, and, and she saw my, I had an interest in Braille from this card. So from then on, she let me keep the card and has let me see other materials that she's had in Braille. But more recently, I thought I'd team up with my friends Holly and Rhea uh, who wanted to explore a bit further and see how Braille was being used outside of Christmas cards. So I wanted to see just how much braille we could actually find within the city centre of Nottingham. So we've come here, we've got a cold day, it's quite windy, we've just missed the rain. We have a bit of an explore, to find out just how much society is using braille. So we've been Nottingham now for maybe an hour and we've been looking around a lot of different places in search of braille and it's been reasonably hit or miss. Um, some places uh, you're always going to find it, I think lifts and, and uh, toilets and, and buses always will, will have it on the stop sign but there's lots of aspects of society, menus, advertisements, simply nothing, we just couldn't find anything um, and this, this is going to limit a lot of people who partially sighted and they have to rely on a lot of the sensors and a lot of other people to really guide them through just navigating you know a day-to-day -day life. So could you introduce to me who you are? Um, hello I'm Shirley I'm um, your auntie. Uh, <laughs> I live here with my dad and my guide dog, Bede. So the first question is, how long did it take you to learn Braille? Well, that's a massive question. Um, I lost my vision about 12 years ago. So until I was about 52, I was completely sighted. 
so I hadn't um, even any need for braille or anything but unfortunately through an accident uh, I lost my eyesight but what happened was um, my blood pressure went shooting through the sky which we didn't know I thought I'd just got a really bad headache um, I had a fit and uh, ended up in hospital and then when I woke up I couldn't see and um, that was my journey then into Braille. After about a year, because it took me about a year to actually come to terms with losing my sight and trying to get out uh, myself, um, I phoned up um, social services who ran a um, sight impairment team and who came out um, and they knew that the first thing I would want to do was to get out. So I was taught how to use an um, Ambutec cane, a white cane, but what happened shortly after that, after about a year, and I got good with my cane, and then I just really, I'd always been an avid reader, always, yeah. read till the back of my eyes were red raw at <laughs> night time. I just was fascinated um, with the, the written word. And um, the one thing I really wanted to do was to learn to read. Um, and then I met a young girl called Kerry, Kerry Chambers, and it's Kerry that taught me how to read Braille. I mean, you talk about waking up and, and not being able to see, that must yeah. be extremely scary. It was frightening. I, I could never even and, imagine. Yeah, and the thing about it was I was in hospital, um, and actually I was challenged. What do you mean you can't see? <laughs> Tell me what you can see. And I said, well, how do you describe nothing? I said, it's not black, it's not grey. I said, there's just an absence of anything. Let's talk a bit about the use of Braille in society. So, do you find it very useful? How often do you think you're using it? Braille is, um, I know you'll, you know, it's a code that you have to crack and it's a code that it comes easy. People say it comes easy with the end of your fingertips, but that only is so if you've been born blind. If you've not been born blind, you've been using your hands all your life for writing and different things. So the sensitivity of your fingers is not the same sensitivity as if you've been born blind. And it took me uh, about a year to be able to just learn to do the first stage of Braille, because there's two, two, there's two levels, and it takes an awful lot of paper to write a letter. To overcome this is what you call Braille level two, and I've not mastered that at all yet. And that is what we, where we use contractions. And dots are placed in similar places, with either a dot in the front of it, it could be a letter in the front of it, and it actually changes the meaning of that dot. Oh, so so yeah. you've got to understand when it's changing, and you've got to understand what it's changed to, and how it is working in the context of what you're reading. So you talk about it being quite minimal, and you talk about it being quite hard to find. Mm -hmm. So what would you change specifically? Um, well, imagine you get it, you go what you go on a, um, a bus to town. You hopefully get off on your stop because if you don't, you can often have quite a long walk because you're not where you thought you were. No. Um, I think one thing I'd change. I, I didn't know that there was any braille at bus stops. I've never seen any because in Nottingham, it's actually been developed further for people to go on buses, and there's now lit up. Um, little places to which bus is coming which when how long you got to wait uh, where it goes to what time it is so that you know when to expect the next bus and as far as i know there's no braille anymore no, um, so um that's one thing the good thing that nottingham does about the buses is that there's a speaking service when you get on the bus yes. it tells you when your next stop is coming and it tells you where you are um, and I always, when I, obviously I take Bede, and when I get on, because Bede is obviously a guide dog because he's got his collar on, etc., and his harness, um, the, the bus drivers are absolutely lovely. So they'll just say, where are you? do you want to get off? And I tell them where I want to get off, and they just say, leave it with me then. Um, and they are good, they're ever so good. Um, and Bede helps me every day, taking me to the shops, and going out, just a pleasure, going out for a meal just going out and meeting people, um, which we do quite often. But Bede's getting a bit long in the tooth now. He's nine years old this year, so I think this will be his last year of work. And then after that, I think I'll retire him um, so he can actually have a really deserved, unworking rest of his life.
is the most gentle creature I think you can possibly imagine and he's what you call a kind dog Definitely. he's so kind and forgiving he doesn't like hold things against you he lives in the moment that's what dogs do they live in the moment I don't think I've ever known a relationship quite like mine with Bede. I think it's no, I one of the strongest it. relationships I've ever had you know and I love people don't get me wrong I love my niece and nephew but Bede, it's a completely different feeling I just I would I would die for him. I really would. Not that I wouldn't die for you, but I would die for him. You know, it does mean absolutely the world. He is my world because he allows me out into the world and has created the freedoms that I now have. The future for the blind and the subsequent use of Braille is on the rise. Designing with the blind in mind is more prevalent than ever before. Seemingly small changes and subtle design choices seem small to the sighted but can make a huge difference for a blind person's comfort, changing the limits of how they can function and helping them effectively see the world, only in a different way. But I do think what you've got to do when you do something as catastrophic as this, you've actually, you've got to learn to accept it and then embrace it. Radical technologies are also being developed, with innovations and modifications far surpassing the incredible opportunity that the Braille typewriter first bought. This not only boosts blind functioning, but pushes the limits of what anyone thought was possible for them to experience. Braille may not be revolutionising the world, but for those who use it, development in Braille technologies are transforming their worlds. Um, if I hadn't embraced if I'd, if I'd have just been really cross and negative about it, I just think I'd have been eaten alive with my own thoughts, to be honest. People who cannot see can now read complete chronicles and write entire novels. They can engage with science and mathematics and participate in art and media in a way they never could before. And even being able to do something fun like see a graphic that represents performance statistics for their football team over the last year. That's something that people with vision do all the time and it would be really nice to think that we could actually bring that back. The more the use of Braille expands, the closer the blind experience becomes to that of sighted people. I believe Braille is developing into more now than simply reading without seeing and has become a whole new world of sight of its own.